Let's dive right into the final game of the day, gentlemen. 2-0, Brazil defeats Serbia. Both goals coming in the second half, courtesy of Richarlison, who plays for Spurs. No goals in league play this year, but KJ, those goals, huge uh, for Brazil. Could you hear, could you feel the sigh of relief of Brazilian fans in the stadium? Yeah, look, there was an announced attendance of 88,000 here tonight. Uh, there's something going on about attendances that they keep announcing more people than actual capacity. I don't know why that happens a lot. <laughs> but anyway, 88, 80, 78, whatever you want. It was a great crowd, predominantly Brazilian. They were here about four hours before kickoff as I made my journey here. I think relief's a good word for it, Andy. Look, I think they want to be entertained. I think they had enough chances in the game uh, to feel like they could have scored a lot more. Uh, but as the game wore on, you wonder whether they're going to get that moment. You wonder when they're going to score that goal, as you alluded to. But uh, look, just the pure entertainers of the World Cup for me. Vinicius was unbelievable on that left hand side. Rafinha getting on that end of the game. This Neymar, they've got a lot of attacking talent. Look, you don't win a World Cup in the first game, but that was a pretty good, good a good mark to lay down, Gareth. Yeah, um, it took until the final game of the teams that we've seen for the very first time for one side to lay down a marker as a true World Cup winner here in Qatar. And that was that Brazilian performance right there. No team in the performances that they put together come anywhere close to what we saw here today. KJ, you mentioned the attacking talent. Casemiro, I'm not sure that there's a player on the planet that makes the game look as easy as he does. The two center backs, Marquinhos, Thiago Silva, just in complete control. Good fullbacks. Like, this team is as good as they get. And perhaps we should have gone into a little bit more. Like, there was a lot of talk about Argentina's form coming into this tournament, unbeaten in 35. Well, after or uh, since uh, Brazil lost to Argentina in the Copa America final, they have 12 wins and just three draws. But before that 1-0 loss, if you watch that game, it was more of a scrap. It was like more of a street fight than an actual football match. There wasn't that much football that was played in that game. Before that, they were went undefeated in 16. They had 15 wins and one loss. So no, since November of 2019, this side who hasn't won a World Cup in two decades now has 27 wins, four draws, and one loss. And you just wonder, who's the side that can compete and contend against them? If you're looking at the draw and the potential bracket, they go on and win this group. They play the runners up from Group H. That could be Uruguay. That would be a tricky match. But you really look ahead to this, the quarterfinals and a potential battle between the Titans in terms of first game performances between them and Spain. In Spain, maybe the youthful exuberance and some of the speed and pace and the way that Luis Enrique likes to play, KJ. Um, perhaps that can trouble this Brazilian side because I think you need to press. You need to play athletic. You, you need to play a fast game against them. But I'm looking at Spain, Brazil, and whoever comes out of that game as we kind of look ahead. Like, from what I've seen right now, those two sides kind of stand above the rest. I'm wondering, KJ, based on everything, Wheels, that you just said there, our preview show, I feel like we were all in an agreement that the next World Cup champion was going to be from South America. After seeing Argentina, after seeing Brazil, where are you on that, KJ, between the two? Well, I mean, I was in the stadium two days ago for Argentina, and it was a disaster. Uh, I still think they could win the World Cup. Uh, I'll say this about Brazil. I think this kind of profile of the game suits them. And I'm with Gareth. They are one of the favorites. But I thought they were one of the favorites in 2010. And they dismantled in the second half against the Dutch in their out. We all thought they were going to do it in 2014 at home soil. It was an absolute disaster against Germany, and they got massacred. And then in 2018, they were a really good team and they got beat in a game like that against Belgium. And one game, I just worry a little bit about them. I worry about their histrionics. I worry about their mental edge. They've got firepower for fun. And are you going to win a World Cup with Rafinha, with Richarlison, with Vinicius Jr. and Neymar on the field? That's a lot of attacking talent. And I guess the top teams, I'm not sure whether they can get away with that. In 2002, they put Cleverson in midfield and made a change during the World Cup. And that's why they won the World Cup. So, look, I think that, I think they are they will be the favourites to win the World Cup after this performance. Uh, but they've got a lot of work to do. And I still think that this young team, and they are a young team, Ali, are still going to show us that they can compete when the going gets tough. Because they're going to face a lot of uh, uh, challenges ahead in, the, in this World Cup. I think they'll do it again. They'll play that extra midfielder in, in the games that matter. Bigger games. Yeah. 
That that would be the question, right? Is is they do at times play Casemiro and Fred and, and Paqueta moves a bit further forward and is kind of like their Di Maria, right? Someone who can kind of go everywhere and be adaptable. So they they, they do have that option. I, I think those are all fair kind of questions that, that KJ raised, certainly based on, on the history of this team. But I do think like watching that game today, and I don't think Serbia are a bad side. They, they've got some decent quality in, in, in their team. Watching that game today, as, as much as the Richarlison second goal will get the headlines because it was a sensational goal and, and maybe the goal of the tournament, what really impressed me was they just absolutely smothered Serbia from, from the first minute to last. Like I, I checked the stats a few minutes from the end. I don't know if it changed. They didn't have a shot on target in, in, in that game. And that was what really impressed me was that they were waiting for the quality to come and waiting for that moment to come and attack. But in terms of whenever Serbia had had anything in transition, it was just snuffed out within seconds. You know, for, with Casemiro, was, it was outstanding. He's a brilliant player. The centre-back pairing is, is so good. They've got fullbacks who I think are much different to kind of the traditional Brazilian fullbacks. They tend to tuck into the wood a bit more and, and give the team more stability with, with obviously the wingers providing that width. So I, I gotta say, coming into the tournament, they were my pick to win it. And, and I really like what I saw today in terms of a team that looks like it's built back to front and not just at the top end, as is sometimes the case with Brazil, uh, to win a tournament here.